Now we're going to jump down into actually what to do with that eye model. Okay. Um, so I set up just a couple really cool, quick examples here. Once you have that eye model, um, if you want to dabble in this a little bit, you can use the, the uh, uh, developer.belly.com uh, my eye models area, and you can actually build out your own process. And we'll show the design review really, really quick. Okay. Nice to know what machine you're on. All right. So simple case. You can bridge in your files. You can you can create a name. You can do it by file. You can do an empty model that you can assign to your I twin synchronization process, which is pretty slick. Okay. You can also bridge into the project-wise shears, okay? So there are all kinds of neat ways to do this. So you grab that, that iModel file, or actually, this is a good point. You can use either. The, the big difference for me is back to that use case. If I use the iModel itself, the .iModel file, it contains all the artifacts that were generated or contained within that, uh, that base DGN. So, you know, imagery, uh, point clouds, uh, PDFs, whatever you might have bound or included in the process, it will gather all those up into that bucket. If, if all you care about is really the, the raw data uh, and some of the graphics, then then that file would be would be fine as well. OK, so that while that generates, uh, we'll go back to um, some existing ones that I had here. And just to be clear, your the the use of the I model itself, the actual context of the data is open source. The use of the iTwin platform, which is onto Bentley's hosted site, that is that is not, and that's something you would talk to your cult rep about uh, what you would choose to do there. Okay, so uh, this this just really quick example uh, of that data in play. Great uh, example that Mr. Jeff did there for us. So I just have one element selected, and I want I want just to make one notable point for those that have dabbled in this. So I have one piece of that roadway up, up in that top left selected there, and this is what's in my SQLite browser that I just showed you a second ago. Now, in this case, I used a CSV injection into one of the item types, okay? What does that mean? I built an array of items into one items for simplicity of extraction. There are, there are so many techniques. And if you're a developer, okay, we do a back to MCS are one of our biggest claims, you know, of, of uh, what we add to the communities is understanding the technology. Our developers and architects that work for us here are uh, just outstanding and knowing, knowing the, basic principles of software engineering, software design, database, and so forth, we look for the recipes that make your, your needs successful. Um, again, uh, all the thanks to Bentley for you know, adding these, these functionality items. Um, it, you, you've really got to have a well thought out uh, architected plan to be able to, uh, to, to, to bring this to a maintainable state. And that's the key part of it. So now, uh, just a couple last little items on the um, presentation. And then I'm going to show you the extraction to JSON with our last remaining type time here. Oh, actually, no, we can't miss this. I'm going to show you the console. Sorry about that. This is very cool. For those of you that 
don't much per se know the SQL side of uh, the you know the the world and want to learn how to write queries. One thing about that Bentley has added that I think is very notable is this iModel console. So if you if you are using their hosted solution. I just opened an I model into their console. This allows you to go ahead and, and um, run commands against the, it's, it's actually taking a little bit of time to open this up. Now I can actually run, um, say, a, a query command against this, this I model, and I can extract that same result. So if you see what just happened here in the bottom of my screen, um, I just inputted a very simplistic query that did all of the respective joins for me. So the, the, the beauty of using their JavaScript uh, APIs and their functions they give you is just this in itself. It lets you get to those elements very, very quickly and query them, okay? Now, I want to lead off or finish up, I should say, with the... Um, with our implementation on how we've done this, okay? And so I'm gonna bring up a command window and I'm also gonna, uh, I'm gonna pivot back to um, one of our last deck slides here. And I apologize, running a little low on time. Um, we've done an Electron implementation, which makes this a cross-platform, a, a portable application, not requiring, you know, hosting. So we can go ahead and we can run our extractions from a um, online process, okay, or, or a, a local process, just to say, excuse me. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and run this really quick so you guys can see this live. And I need uh, uh, just a moment. Now, the beauty of what this does is it, it actually um, allows us to run command line parameters into this process. And those command line parameters um, can be, um, what do we want to do with the data? Okay, where do we want to send it? This is a really generic example, but how do we want to search for it? Okay, so we've got all kinds of, of options to do here. And you'll notice there, the one thing, this is kind of a, a 3D representation. I'm going to do this one more time, and I'm going to output this thing to a... Um, more of a 2D representation, top down. And those command line parameters, by the way, we've got it set up where we can write out to other data sources, such like um, oh, ESRI or something to that extent, okay? So actually, here's a really good case right here. Okay. And there is a 2D top down. I can go ahead and generate all of that data, save it out. It'll actually write out my JSON files. And then I'm going to jump to a uh, the grand finale. I'll just display that in a in a browser, and then we'll. It looks like we're running pretty short on time, but I want to show that output very quickly. Okay, so we're gonna. This is this is the JSON. All right, to cut to the chase, what it is, is a nice text file that, that quantifies my item types, my properties, and the description of my geometry by feature. And you can render this then in, in, a, in a, just a JSON um, a viewer, or you can take this downstream into another application, uh, such as you know, ESRI's Arc, ArcGIS desktop or server applications. Or something in a in a, another system that that can read the JSON data. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.